God bless and welcome back to the triad room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is a sickness and Christ is the cure. The title of this video is On Changing God, Gird Up Your Loins. Now, it's a strange title for a video, but it pertains to the life of, of, of Job. Um, this video is actually a, a part two of the first video that I ever made on this channel called um, Though He Slay Me Yet Will I Trust Him. I made that some nine or so months ago. Uh, so this is long overdue, uh, part two. Now, I'm going to hopefully be very short in this video. Um, I've got a lot of information to give, but I'm going to try to condense it. So bear with me. Um, those who know about the book of Job, um, well done. But those who don't, I'm going to paraphrase and try to get to the point I need to make in this video very quickly. Um, first and foremost, Job chapter 1 speaks of uh, the man called Job from the land of Oz. The Bible says he was perfect and upright, um, one that feared God and shunned evil. The Bible uh, went on to explain some background to this great man. He had seven sons, three daughters. He was wealthy. In fact, he was uh, the wealthiest man at the time. Um, in the east, um, he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 shiasses, and a very great house. In other words, he had a mansion in modern day terms. Um, the Bible says in uh, Job chapter 1, verse 6, that there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves, angels came to present themselves to God, and in their presence, the, for some reason, was Satan. We won't go into that, but he was in. He was there, and God entered into a dialogue with Satan, and God brought up Job. It wasn't Satan. Some people say it was Satan that said Job, but God brought up the topic of Job, and God said in verses eight, um, "Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and shuns evil." And he says, Satan uh, responded to uh, God's uh, narrative and said, the reason why he fears you um, is because there is a hedge. You put protection around him. Um, and because of you, he is blessed. Because of you, he is increased. But if you were to take away that protection, this man would, in a sense, curse you to your face. Um, and so God said, okay. Um, I'm going to give you the power to touch this man. Don't touch him, him physically, but touch his substance. And so Satan left the presence of God. And in a day, and I'm not going to give you everything um, verse by verse, but I'll paraphrase again. In one day, um, Job lost his, uh, all the, his oxen. Um, he lost the servants uh, that were looking after the oxen bar one. They were taken away by, by uh, the called Sabians, uh, neighboring uh, peoples. Um, he lost um, all his sheep. Um, fire fell from heaven and destroyed his sheep um, um, bar one servant. Um, in the same day, um, Chaldeans and other people, surrounding people came and they stole all his camel. And killed all the servants bar one um, the same day and also on the same day um, his children seven sons three daughters were having a party at their elder brother's house and the great wind the Bible says came and blew the house down and everybody bar one a servant was killed in the house and Job in one day lost his his wealth he lost his his, his children and it seemed that his world had literally collapsed upon him. In fact, in chapters 2, um, Satan also touched his body. So he broke out in these huge, horrible boils from his head, head right down to the bottom of his feet. And his wife said to him, you know, man, maintain your integrity, you know, curse God and die. You know, because she was saying, in a sense, there's something you have done to cause this calamity to come upon you. Curse God and die. Take the easy way out. But he told this woman, the foolish woman, um, you know, um, because Job knew God. You know, he had a relationship with God. So he did not take the, the bait that his wife placed in front of him. You know, he rather served God. So here began this 
uh, this downward spiral, you know, in the life of Job. Um, Job didn't fully understand what he was going through, but he realized that God was in it. But he didn't realize how he was being uh, used, in a sense, in this narrative, in this story. And we see, um, as I've said, how Job's wife first came and said, curse God and die, and then followed up by his friends, um, Eliphaz, uh, Bildad, and Zophar, his, his three best friends came and they, for a period of time, they mourned with him in chapter 2. But from chapters 4 through to 25, again, I haven't got time to go for it, we see them beginning to say, Job, I think you've done something. The reason why you're going through all this calamity, you must have done something. Um, they, again, didn't understand that God was behind the scenes, you know, working out something for his glory, for his good. But they blamed Job. So Job sank into this, this mire, this, this depressing place, um, to the extent where in chapters 3, he actually cursed the day that he was born. If you've got time to read uh, chapters 3, 1 to uh, 4. Um, he said, Job cursed the day he was born. He said, let the day perish wherein I was born, and night in which it was said there is a man, child conceived. So he went into this, this, this really, really deep, deep depression. Um, and to be fair to the man, um, I have three children myself. If I was to lose one of those children, oh my God, I can't even imagine how I would feel. I can't imagine how, what dark place I would get into. I, I don't think I'd be able to be consoled um, if I lost um, um, any of my beautiful girls. So it's hard for me to, in a sense, uh, empathize with Job. I can sympathize, but I have never been to that depth of depression or darkness that he went to. Um, so yes, so Job, in a sense, I can understand him uh, crying out um, to heaven. I can understand him wishing that he was dead, never born. I can understand him because I too perhaps would do the same thing. In fact, people have committed suicide for less. People have committed suicide for less. Remember, he lost his, his health, his wealth, his wife, his friends. Um, his substance, you know, I'm surprised he didn't go mad. So I can sympathize with him to an extent. But we see in Job chapter 38, the Lord was not happy with Job. And he said, the Lord answered Job out of the storm and said, who is this who darkens counsel with words of ignorance? Who is crying out in sackcloth and ashes, things they do not know about. God was uh, upset with the fact that Job was wishing he was dead. God was upset with the fact that Job was speaking things that he did not understand or could comprehend. He didn't know what was going on, but he was just crying out of, hu of his humanity. He did not see uh, the God at work in his situation. All he felt was how he was feeling right there and then. And then we see a series of, of difficult questions that God posed to him. Um, I won't go through them all, from Job 38 right through to Job uh, 42. God threw a series of questions at Job. First and foremost, he said to him, gird up your loins. This really means stand up uh, to, at to attention. Come before my presence. You know, um, I have some questions for you to answer. You know, get ready for action. And so God begins to, to, to throw these, these, these questions that not even I could have <laughs> fathomed. First of all, he says, where were you when I founded the earth? Tell me if you understand. Who determined its size? Surely, Job, you know. Who stretched out the measure line for it? You know, God goes on to say, who shut uh, within, uh, within the, 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 the doors of the sea? You know, when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds, it goes on and on and on. Um, one of my favorite verses is um, chapter 40, when it talks about uh, Leviathan. Who can lead Leviathan about with a hook or tie down his tongue with a rope? Can you put a ring into his nose or pierce through his, his cheek with a gaff? Um, Leviathan um, in Jew Jewish culture speaks of a great sea creature that uh, no one can, can control save God and God alone. 
Um, so God goes on, you know, he says, come on, Job, give me an answer, you know. And he goes about the, the universe and the stars and so on and so forth. And he said, Job, give me an answer. Where were you when I was creating and making all these things? Where were you? And Job didn't have an answer. In the midst of his suffering, in the midst of his, 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 his pain and agony, Job didn't have an answer. And what that tells me is this. Sometimes when we're going through our, our, our suffering, when we're going through our, our pain, we may have lost a loved one, may have lost a job or something um, pertaining to that, we look down because we are heavy. We look down because we are depressed. But what God was trying to get Job to realize that he should have been looking up, not looking down. God was saying, Job, I understand that you are going through some difficult situation. I understand you're going through some, some things that men could not uh, go through. But here it is, you know, despite your grief, you know, I am still great. Despite your demise, I am still uh, divine. Despite your lack, I am still all sufficient. I am still omnipotent. God was saying to Job, you know, it's in me you live and move and have your being. Um, without me, there is no you, Job. So despite the fact you've lost your children, your oxen, your camels, your sheep, your friends, your wife says curse God and die, despite all the things you've lost, your health, your wealth, your well-being, I am greater than all those things put together. That's what God was saying to, to, to Job. You can't compare your grief with my greatness. And maybe you are going through a situation where you're navel-gazing, you're looking down. And God is saying, it's time for you to look up. It's time for you to look up. Turn your protestations into praise. Turn your raging into uh, repentance. Because Job, um, he realized where he went wrong. And Job chapter 42 verse 6, it says, Job said this, Therefore I disown what I have said. Job realized that irrespective of the fact he had lost his wealth, his children, his wife said, curse God and die. His friends came and gave him a hard time. He, he, you know, God, he realized that God was greater. And in the midst of sackcloth, ashes, sickness, Job said, I repent. Lord, I am sorry. I forgot how great you were. In the midst of my pain, in the midst of my suffering, I forgot how great you are. And God is saying to someone going through some serious situation right now, it doesn't matter how big that situation is or how heavy it is to carry, God is greater. God is bigger. God is bigger. So be reminded, don't get lost in self-pity. Don't get lost in your situations and problems. You know, lift up your head, all your gates. You know, lift up your heads. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. God is bigger than whatever you're going through right now. When you give him the glory, when you give him the praise, he is able to take you through. And we see in Job 42 verse 12, as I close, that Job's latter days were greater than his first. God was able to restore all the things that Job had lost because he came to the realization that God was bigger than the situation he found himself in. Now, even though it was dire, it was desperate. It was dark. God was still bigger and greater. And I hope uh, that message chime with someone right now listening to this. That irrespective of what you're going through, God is greater. God is bigger and he's able to take you through. May God bless you. May God keep you. And as I always say, share this message with as many people as you can. We're in the midst of lockdown at this present time and you may think, oh my God, I can't make this. I can't go through this. Look up. God is bigger and greater than COVID-19. May God bless you. 
Dear viewer, if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Saviour, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God. May God bless you. May God keep you. Until next time.